And we're live. Welcome everybody to Big Area Live, presented by Applied Arsenal Finishes and Gunworks. And I heard someone echoing there for a second, but stopped. <laughs> um, also, the range of 3v5, Spitzer Precision, BAT Arms, and Eggless Ammunitions. Uh, so welcome everybody. Tonight, we just got a little bit of an open chat night. Um, got some of our regulars and uh, got someone else that's new in here with us tonight. Uh, so go down the list and kind of introduce everybody. Of course, we got... Uh, David from Running Ammunition. Uh, so welcome everybody tonight. Welcome. We've got a little bit of an open chat tonight. Um, that's coming off yes. Corey, by the way. I think yes. we must yes. have it open in the background. Uh, so go down the list and kind of introduce everybody. Of course, we got uh, unless it's up. Give me a second. I'll make sure it's not playing on my end. That's not mine. Sorry, everybody. Just got to double check and make sure we have don't have a uh, YouTube playing in the background because it'll also feed back and echo and do all kind. Of Goofy stuff. So as we we're saying, we got Pete from the Range 35 with us as well. So welcome, and and Will from uh, I don't know, mess up your name. Both Vulture Equipment, um, Vulture. Okay. Vulture Equipment Works. Yeah, can't speak tonight for some reason. Tripped me up. I was gonna say we lost you for a minute, and they came back. Um, yeah, I was trying to load that uh, that app for the bars, but that didn't work. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, like I was saying, we were having issues with, like, for some reason, it's you guys running max tonight. Can't do the lower thirds. Um, not a big deal, but we also got Dylan Price with us tonight. Welcome, Dylan. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And, of course, Corey from Southern Style Beards. Yes, awesome. sir. You got, I got it that right. one right. Dang, yeah. man. I'm always messed up the intros, but we got it. So, All right. um, anyway. One of the things I was going to kind of talk a little bit about tonight was, uh, so I went to my first gun show uh, down here in the south. So it's a little bit different experience than going to a gun show in Illinois. A um, couple things I can kind of explain. Well, first off, in Illinois, you can't open carry anything. Well, you know, people are carrying rifles around, slung on their back at the gun show. Um, of course, you know, open carry on their holster, um, you know, their pistols and so forth on a holster. Uh, but although the signs, you know, outside the buildings, you know, make sure everything's unloaded, no loaded magazines, that kind of sort of thing. But it was kind of cool to actually see that. Um, just kind of a little bit different atmosphere. Some of the pricing was a little bit better uh, in some respects, so it was, you know, about typical for a gun show. Um, the other thing, too, is that it was kind of interesting to watch people be able to buy a firearm, do their 4473 and so forth, and be able to take their, their uh, purchases home the same day where there's you know, not a waiting period and so forth. Um, in Illinois, some, sometimes you, you know, see people picking up uh, firearms from gun shows, but they've already done the paperwork and started the whole process ahead of time and all that kind of sort of thing. So it's, it is a different experience. Um, one of the uh, other things, let's see. Um, yeah, just it was kind of fun. But I uh, also got to go and check out... Um, well, I've been to it once, but haven't actually gotten a shoot at it. Was Blackstone, um, uh, their range? Black, I think it's Blackstone Shooting Sports. I forget what they're called. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, which is down here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, nice indoor range and everything. So me and Laura actually went out there. In fact, David, by the way, we actually did test out the uh, 45 ACP you sent as well. So ran in that a few times. Pretty nice. So. Um, I also want to touch on something. I know if we, I know we talked a little bit about it before. Obviously, we did it a few times in a row beforehand to kind of help get the word out. Um, Pete, how did the uh, the two gun run go? I don't know if we had you on after that or not. I can't remember. Oh, you're muted, by the way. Let me turn your uh, mic back. Sorry, on. Sorry, there we go. go. Yeah, we, gotcha. we, well, we had Brandon on last week, so that's we, right. Uh, we that's had right. more important stuff to talk about. So it went well. In fact, we've had a couple of debriefs already talking about uh, first weekend in October. I awesome. remember if it's the third or the fourth. We're going to make some changes. You know, as we talked about before, the prize table was unbelievable. Dylan, we oh, got to get you up here for that. Oh, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so prize table was unbelievable. We're going to probably break it down into a pro, an amateur, and maybe even a novice division this time and uh, probably get our buddy Johnny Van back with his barbecue. We need to get Corey up here and Dave and everybody. Um, 
But like I said, the prize table was ridiculous. It was a great event, of course, sponsored by Four, our Four Roses Bourbon, our good friend Brian Krieger. We had uh, two, let's see, we had a Tactical Edge Arms rifle, of course, Radical Firearms, two rifles. We had a couple of Glock pistols, Springfield Armory pistol. Oh, wow. Two Rock River 9 mil carbines, which the side match, top five males and top three females faced off. And we, we need to get more women in for the next match, but faced yeah, off. Yeah, we saw Lori Blackwell wrote one. Lori things. Blackwell and did a great job, and I'm not taking anything away from Lori. Lori herself said we need to attract more women for the match. <clears throat> but the side match was one of the Rock River pistol carbines with irons on it, which was interesting. Jay and I, Jay Carrillo won the match, uh, but but uh, Mike Bouton, you probably know Mike Rick from some of the matches in the area. He's a great shooter. He mm -hmm. won uh, one of the carbines and Lori won the other one. Great to see people with irons after they've had a electric optic on their rifle. You know, yeah, watch them awesome. slowing down and picking up that front post. But it was a it was a great match. You know, again, uh, great to have our partners Grunt Style do such a great job. Gave away uh, a T-shirt with a match, lunch, Four Roses bourbon tasting, a great swag bag from Four Roses. The the bottle openers that Dave donated and Will customized. So it was a That's really awesome. good match. Yeah, the, for, I mean, the value is there. I mean, how many local matches have that many guns to give away, you know, um, and to be won and all that kind of stuff? That's just, that's amazing. Yeah, and ha you know, we had a bunch of hyperfire triggers. We had three awesome. packs of hex mags. It, I mean, it was, you know, everybody, everybody walked away pretty happy. Very cool. I know you mentioned we had Brandon on the show last week. For those that didn't know and didn't get to see last week, might want to go back and check out the video uh, from the TV show Better Call Saul. Brandon uh, K. Hampton, he was uh, playing Ernesto, who is um, basically the main character's brother's assistant. So not one of the, the frontline characters, but one that was actively, you know, um, had a speaking role and so forth and had, had some decent amount of camera time on it. And just a really cool, really cool guy, you know. So that was a lot of fun, actually. Um, so Dylan, tell us a little bit about yourself and what, what you do and everything for those that may not know. All right. Um, during the week, I'm a production machinist for FN America. So, um, basically I'm making machine guns all day. It's a pretty sweet job. <laughs> awesome. doesn't, doesn't get much better than that. Um, aside from that, I shoot, I shoot a lot. Um, I shoot four to six matches a month on average. Um, that's including majors, a lot of local matches. Um, always shooting, always got to be doing something, whether it's dry fire, live fire, a match, probably close to 40 hours a week just in shooting on top of work. So, Wow. So tell us a little about your gear that you use. Um, for three gun, well, I shoot open division and USPSA on three guns, so I've got all the crazy uh, impractical red dots and shotgun. Uh, I run a dissident arms KL-12 shotgun. Um, Vortex Venom Red Dot on that. A Jeff Abernathy Custom 2011. Um, and then just some piled together junk AR. My AR is the redhead stepchild of the bunch, so I don't spend a whole lot of money on it. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, the, the AR is a pretty accurate rifle in most any configuration for a sense, you know? Um, yeah, even, even not spending a whole lot of money on it, it's worked. Just fun. I mean, as far as shooting open division, normally your your pistol and your shotgun will only work half the time. So the rifle is the one thing I haven't had to worry about. That's cool. Makes sense. So, uh, yeah, actually, speaking of, um, you said F and H, right? Or K? Right. I'm sorry, I must. Right. Okay. So, um, actually, I I had had on loan for a little while the F and H uh, SLP comp. Um, for, for uh, a bad which uh, that is that is an awesome shotgun. I like it a lot. Um, They're awesome. 
It's on my list. I'd like to actually move into that. I was lucky enough to get serial number eight of the prototype SLP competitions. Um, oh. And that gun, it was run for two seasons by one of the FNH pro team members. It's just, it's beat all to hell, but it still works just fun. Uh, I run it every now and then when I'm shooting practical or factory. That's awesome. That is really cool. Um, yeah, definitely on my list because right now I'm running an MKA in 1919 that um, I had built by Tooth Nail Armory. Nice. Um, and I like it. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it does have some issues with jamming and stuff, and I probably got to tweak the mags a bit to get it to run better, and I just haven't spent time doing that. But um, I kind of want to be able to move out of running like an you know, open or, un or unlimited division, more like a practical division at some point. So I want to kind of look at maybe getting something like that SLP comp at some time in the future. Yeah, SLP is a great gun. I know most of practicals dominated by the Benelli's and stuff like that, um, but I feel like they've they really sell the, the FN short um, because it's a gas gun. You get a little more recoil, but you get that 100% reliability all the time, which I feel like is a little more important than you know, a slight mitigation of recoil. Right. Makes sense. So, uh, Corey, what you got going on over there? I'm still trying to, trying to heal up from my leg surgery. Um, I've got a doctor's appointment uh, Thursday afternoon to kind of see how – how things uh, things are going? Get my stitches out. Hopefully, get back up and, and walking. Um, I, I hear kind of a little bit of an echo, which it could be me, which I apologize for. Um, you know, I'm I'm waiting to hear back. Uh, I feel like my lighting is awful. Um, <laughs> That's the thing you I, find I, out about the video stuff is the lighting I, is the critical part. I know. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back. Uh, Hopefully, I hear some good news tomorrow. Um, we're going to. Uh oh. Vapor lock, Corey. Yep. Until they jammed up there, stuck on his face. is a little hard. Um, hey, Corey, we were losing your signal there a little bit because it froze on you. Now you're back. In my back? Mm hmm. Okay, what was I saying? <laughs> You're waiting on uh Oh, okay. Um, oh, it's really I'm weird. Waiting. Sorry, What's I interrupted you. I was going to – something that just was weird thought to me. I didn't interrupt you. We'll get back on track in a second. I'm sitting here. I'm like, I got my arms on my desk, and I'm feeling this, like, vibration. I'm like, why am I shaking? And I thought about it. the washer or dryer on the other side of the, of the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a new layout for me. So I'm like, oh, someone must be doing clothes. Earthquake. Anyway, sorry. We'll get back on topic here, Corey. Go ahead. Um, no, I'm uh, I'm in the process of uh, of trying to um, possibly have a company outsource my products for me um, because I've got a I've I've been talking to a lot of people and um, a lot of people wanting to carry and, and, and stuff like that and. Uh, and with what's going on, you know, it's just something that we have to do right off the bat because I can't, I can't do it all by myself. Um, so we're we're looking uh, we're looking to do some some big things and work with a lot of people and and hopefully I I can work with some of you guys too um, since we're all we're all close. Um, a lot of big things. Um, sky's the limit, guys. On, on every on every little thing we do. I mean, we work together. There's no telling how high we can go. Um, just. Uh, I'm I'm just so thankful, Rick, that that you have me back every week or every other week. Um, yeah, absolutely. This is. This you is had some questions last week for uh, for Brandon. I, hey, man, when you told me you got the questions, man, that's what I do. <laughs> hey, I, um, uh, go ahead. I was gonna say, David, do you have anything you want to say real quick? Because I know he's said he's got to actually run real fast here. Ah. Yeah, I uh, I told my wife like. 10 minutes so yeah my wife wants to spend some time and stuff we've been we've been pretty distant but um yeah go ahead let Corey finish up and i'll jump in and say something okay no, that's why i'm gonna no, catch you before you took off so you can just drop out on us i appreciate it go, go ahead Corey. finish up but uh you, you know guys this is this is phenomenal what we what we get together and what we do every every tuesday night and i'm so thankful that i know each and every one of you um it's just uh just awesome thank you Likewise, Thank man. I catch you, brother. We appreciate it. Yeah. Yes, sir. 
So, Dave, you want to wrap wrap up because you had to run run real quick here. So, so I uh, I, I did my little Instagram blasting of your uh, live feed. I don't know if you got anybody commenting. I love Big Gunner eighty one and all that fun stuff. But uh, give a pen away tonight to anybody who decides they're going to comment. If 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 I could rummage anybody in, watch it for you. That's awesome. And then uh, Dylan's new, so. That. So since Dylan's new, he gets a pen. Nice. Are you, are you a veteran? <laughs> no, awesome. no. Well, that's okay. Appreciate it, anyways. But yeah, um, Rick, if you want to get Dylan's information over to me or Dylan, if you want to just message yeah. me on Facebook or whatever. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, yeah. There you go. I'm so jealous. Those are awesome. And and I gotta get Rick a pen too. <laughs> Yeah, I am giving everybody pens except for our host, right? I'm gonna. That, I'm gonna no, 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 no. I'm I'm only teasing around. I, I, there are pretty awesome pens, but uh, no, I appreciate everything that you've done. You know, for oh. sure. Well, and then uh, Corey, get a hold of me too, because I got I got some questions for you and stuff. Um, well, I can't talk about it on live feed, so. Hey, hey, no, nothing, nothing with you. It ain't bad. I just I'm 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 with a business contract stuff, and I can't talk about a live feed. So. I uh, hey, I got you. I'll send you my number. All right. Awesome. Hey, I'll talk to you guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks. Sorry it's so short. No uh, worries. Thanks, Dave. Thanks we'll again. talk to you soon. Later, Dave. See ya. So, uh, Will, what do you have in the works right now? A uh, couple cool things. A couple cool things. We're just putting the finishing touches on a, uh, a cleaver. A, really? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty badass. So you're like kitchen cutler, you know? Well, we've got a couple of kitchen knives that have been sitting around in prototype now for about two years, and cool. uh, we're just kind of finishing up on how the platform, how the handle platform is going to continue. So, if um, if you notice, there's two knives on the on the site, right? And one is the cholera that's got the more of an or, you know organic, uh, smooth flow to the handle, and the other one being the talon has got more of a modern military or you know, a chamfered design. Um, so those two handles, uh, are really kind of, uh, they're really neat because they're optimized for the three fingers of power and allow your, allowing your hand to close, uh, that type of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the same base, the same handle base for all of the knives coming forward. So I started work on a, uh, cleaver. It's still sitting in the, still sitting in the shop. It's about 50% done right now in prototype. And, uh, we were playing with it today in the middle of crunch time and, uh, it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. I can't wait to show you guys the test footage. Uh, we're gonna. So you have it. You have some of this on the, actually on the website right now. No, no, it's uh, in the knife business. You don't release crap until it's in production. <laughs> nope. Go well, yeah, Okay. Gotcha. I didn't know if you had any versions of your of uh, you know, cutlery cutlery type stuff, but no, no, not yet. Once the uh, the Mark Threes are up there now, so the Mark uh, the Mark Threes launch at Blade Show next week. So we lived up the livened up the website, and uh, you can see all the different Cerakote, uh different Cerakote colors now. And let me see if I can screen share. Color matching the screws to uh, uh, to the sheath and the uh, knife. I'm gonna pull it up here real quick, so I can see the MK3. There you go. Yeah, that's pretty pretty nice knife there. Whoa. So we had a lot of good response from uh, the Mark II platform when we did a, a DOD knife. So a buddy of mine came to me and said, look, I want a bunch of these knives for my for my business. And uh, I said, all right, fine. He goes, but they've got to be sterile, like completely sterile. No U.S. markings on them whatsoever. So uh, we ended up using uh, U.S. 440C, uh, steel out of Pennsylvania again, out of my, out of my guys at Crucible. And then uh, from there on, it was all like international parts. And every we had some left over, so the following year uh, we released them, and they were just snapped up so fast because they were black and they had no markings on them, and you know, uber secret squirrel type stuff, right? And uh, he said, "Well, why don't we just put Cerakote on everything now and the Mark Threes, and just boost everything up?" So there you can see on the left hand side you got the black, and then we've got a Magpul gray. And then the uh, next one is the uh, Magpul OD, which is really cool. It's like a World War II OD, so it's a lot darker than uh, 
I don't know, the most of the ODs out there really look sexy. And then you got a flat dark earth. So those are the four basic colors that the knife will come in. Um, and there'll be another, there'll be a fifth variation for that for the purists. It'll be a, uh, a satin finish. So I'm just finishing up the last tweaks uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, on the satin finish. Cool. And then that's, that's pretty awesome. Talon. And go to that second to last picture there. You'll see the, the, the two sheaths. There you go. So we're color matching the screws on the sheath and the mill cord now to match the color in the blade. The black will still stay with the red, but uh, that's kind of the, the new thing now. Hey, and by the way, I was going to mention as well, um, for those out there in YouTube world, we do have a live chat that goes on out there um, on the, uh, if, you're, if you're watching the video on YouTube, people can participate, ask questions, make comments, we'll uh, read them and so forth. Um, and of course, you saw this one that says uh, from Christopher Price, Corey, you know how you feel about the surgery? My back surgery got in the way of everything in shooting sports. I wish you a speedy recovery. Oh, thank you. Um, I'll have to. I'll have to go and reply. Thank you very much. Um, it's. I'm. I'm doing what I'm not supposed to be doing. I'm actually up and walking now, because I am a rebel and paying the ass. It's what I do. <laughs> so, Corey, Corey, I've just got one. I got one question. Go. Go for it. Did you kick? Did you kick the crap out of that shark? <laughs> hey, by the way, there's a question over on gun channels as well, which is what I was going to mention. If uh, you're watching our gunchannels.com forward slash big gun 81, uh, Clay asks, What is the hole, the little hole for? I believe he's talking about on your knives there, Will. So, on the cholera, that hole, uh, the primary reason for that is lightning. Um, so, both of the knives have got a 50 50 balance point on the first finger. Uh, so we needed to take metal away, so we decided to use it uh, use it up front. So instead of taking metal out of the side of the blade, we just decided to drill a hole through it. Um, you know, a lot of other guys put holes in their knives for you know various different purposes. Uh, you can use it for a lot of different things: straightening arrows, pulling tent spikes, uh, you know, breaking twigs or whatever. I you know who knows. I basically use it for um, an extra grip point. So I'll choke up on the knife and then put my fingers in those holes. Um, but other than that, it's just for lightning. That was the only place we could get the metal out. Cool. Way over on Gun Channels, they're mentioning um, they have a uh, – oh, by the way, Clay says thanks and cool knives. Um, Webs over on Gun Channels has a Kickstarter campaign going. I'm sure you can find a link over at gunchannels.com for – some Old West uh, style playing cards, like Old West Guns style playing cards. Let me see if I can pull this up. Take photos on this. It's kind of explain it a little better than, than myself. Um, describing it. Here we go. He's got a video actually on there, kind of, kind of discussing what it is and everything. Um, I'll go ahead and do a screen share here, so y'all can see this. So. Looks like uh, he's actually got some pretty good amount of pledges. You know, it's two thousand dollars in pledges so far, but uh, he has got to get to six thousand to make this happen. Um, it says this project will only be fun be funded if it reaches its goal by Monday, June twenty sixth. Um, so it's all or nothing. So either it'll be funded or they're not going to. It's not going to happen. So um, anyhow, they've got like all these old west style like guns are going to be on playing card decks and so forth and. Um, Looks like, I wonder how much, okay, so it says make a pledge without a reward, $10. Pledge $1 or more, thank you. Pledge $7 or more, get three card art stickers. Pledge $15 or more, get one deck of Old West playing gun playing cards. Um, of course, they have an estimated delivery date because it sounds like, if I'm understanding this correctly, they got to get to their goal so they can produce them. Um, spend $30, get two decks. Kind of a cool little project and everything. So it's the purpose of our project is to create a unique deck of cards that can help anyone learn about and compare firearms used in the Old West. We also hope to promote an interest in U.S. firearms history and our Second Amendment. That's pretty cool. So I think it's kind of a neat idea he's got going there. Um, so you can check him out. Again, uh, scroll back up here. So I assume you can go on Kickstarter and search for Old West guns, you know, playing deck or playing card deck, or go to gun channels or search for, you know, G-Webs uh, is the, you know, 
uh, his Kickstarter campaign, campaign um, and so forth. So that's kind of a cool thing I just wanted to throw out there. And for those maybe you can see now, that's the actual, oh, sorry, that's the actual chat that's going on out there in uh, Gun Channel land at uh, gunchannels.com forward slash biggunner81. Uh, throw it up there every week so people can kind of chime in and whatnot. Um, and of course, answer any questions or comments or anything that they have. So same as on Gun So. Yeah, it was nice and pretty awesome. One of the things I was going to ask, um, oh, that's you responding to that. Okay, so, okay, so um, one of the questions I was going to ask myself, for Will, so your new knives that you're going to be coming out with that are more like, um, like you said, that uh, cleaver and stuff, can you get those with the glow in the dark handles? Yeah, yeah, that's the, that was one of the beauty things that I, that I wanted to do with, um, uh, with the knives so the cool thing about the mark two platform is that we standardize the knife uh handles right so going forward mark two mark three mark four uh if you've got a cholera you can purchase any of the handles that are cut for a cholera so we went back to a three bolt main uh, with an independent hole for the lanyard so we've got some things like uh there's some really cool uh Uh oh, froze up. <laughs> it's always funny how these things freeze. Um, you know, everyone's facial expressions and everything that go on on it. So I don't know. Give him. I was giving him a second to see if it catches back up. But uh, oh, he's. There's two of you now. Oh, that's kind of strange. Yeah, do you see the other one that's still there? Yeah. Okay, well, it's, I think it's going away now, but <laughs> it's always fun when your face freezes <laughs> mid-sentence. <laughs> the so power of the YouTube. Freeze out at? I'm not sure. I think we are talking about the interchangeable handles, and then um, at some point. So I've got, some, I've got some really crazy wood that comes from Africa, uh, and you're not supposed to, like, ingest the dust and anything like that or lick the wood because it's poisonous um so we've got a whole oh, bunch man. of stuff and we're starting to stock up um for this summer and this fall so we'll have glow in the dark a couple other different types of cure night handles um what else some neat wood and uh, of course the glow in the dark is is like really fun i mean it glows like you guys saw it last time uh that i was on i think right yep yeah, yep. Well. Yeah, he did show it. That's why I was thinking for it instead of like knives you use in the kitchen or something. Yep. It's kind of a. It's kind of really cool too because you know, let's say you've got your knife and you got it on your on your shooting rig or anything like that, but you're going camping with the kids. Grab yourself your leather sheath, pull the screws out, throw your glow in the dark handles on, and bang, you're using the same knife for a lot of different things. Um, that was one of the most important things that I wanted the customer to be able to change out the look of their knife at any given minute. So by keeping that same handle design and moving forward, so you've got the collar handle or the talon handle, you've got uh, that interchangeability uh, back and forth. So your knife doesn't get stale. A lot of guys will that sit is there cool. and uh, they they'll lock tight the hell out of the handle because they're like, oh, I don't want the customer removing the scales and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why? It's, you know, it's six screws. You know, you put the you put the two screws together and, you know, everything snaps together. Big deal. All right. I think they're just, I think they're more worried about them breaking something and then having to, you know, clog the shop up with customer orders or, you know, customer service things. But it's like, you know, the customer has to come first, you know, you kind of have to take, take that on. That's why That's we do that. That's why we do that lifetime sharpening. And this week, for some reason, right? Oh, I didn't know you did that. Yeah, yeah, it's lifetime warranty and lifetime sharpening on the knives. So while we're getting ready for Blade Show, we had four knives come in this week. And the fifth one came in, it was all rusted. This was back on the Mark I platform when we were using high carbon, uh, high carbon steel. And he's like, oh, my God, my knife. I'm like, it's fine. It's just some surface rust. We'll get rid of it right away. 15 minutes later, we had all the knives sharpened, back in boxes, rust gone, everything conditioned, and back out in the world. So it's really kind of, it, it's important to us to keep the customer happy and to keep them part of the family. 
That's awesome. I definitely want to get one of your knives at some point. I, want to, I definitely want to have you put the Big Ernie Wind logo on it, too. I think that'd be awesome. Oh, definitely. That's, that's, <laughs> that'd look pretty cool. Yeah. The one, uh, the one that we did for Pete's uh, two-gun shoot there really turned out slick. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Who, uh, who ended up winning that one? Jim Dexter. He, uh, he's been at, Rick, you might remember, he won the June match a year ago. So okay. I, I talked to him well when he came in. He was really excited about it. Cool. That's good to hear. Yeah. And uh, had a customer come in yesterday and buy the black stone wash collar of Mark II. Oh, yeah? That's cool. He, he, he was loving it. He said, you know, it looks like a really nice beefy knife. So mm -hmm. uh, chatted with him for about five minutes, and he was happy. And you know what? You guys all know uh, it's a good local story. Will's making them metro area of Chicago. It's got a great story to it, handcrafted, the lifetime warranty, the lifetime sharpening. So he was – he pulled out his bench made that he had – beat the hell out of, you know, at work and said, yeah, this looks like a really nice, robust knife. I'm thrilled with it. So oh, that's cool. That's cool. Actually, we just heard from a, we heard from a guy who was in, uh, he was at the Iwa show out in, uh, out in Germany. And uh, he pulls out his knife at the, uh, at a cocktail party there in the hotel. And he pulls out his knife to show some other guy from India showing other guys, guys, Gus, the guy that makes uh, Damascus knives or something, and he's like all proud of his collar, and he pulls this thing out. And this Indian guy, he's a Sikh, you know, he's got his he's got his head wrap on and everything, and he jumps back in his chair and he goes, "That's a cholera." And my buddy's like, well, "How do you know that?" And he goes, "That's a vulture cholera knife. I know that knife." And he was just totally blown away. He called me today and he's like, "Hey, I've been totally busy at work, but I wanted to let you know that some dude from India knew about your knife in Germany." I was, I was like, "Wow, it's it's pretty fun." We ship those things everywhere. The uh, did I tell you guys the funny tr the funny fact of we sell more knives in Paris, France than we do in the state of Illinois <laughs> at this moment. Wow. Well, that's because the range at three fifty five wasn't cranking them out, right? <laughs> there you go. Case, huh? case is freaking awesome. I love it. <clears throat> Looking so, forward to uh, those Mark threes, man. Yeah. Oh, they're so gorgeous. They're so gorgeous. We yeah, it is. We out of the box and did like a little reveal to ourselves to just to kind of make sure that everything's in place. And Hey, uh, Will, oh, man. If, if one of our customers came in, can they get it customized after the Cerakote? Oh, yeah. Or, yeah definitely. Okay, so if somebody yeah. comes in and says, you know, I'd like to have customized with my logo or whatever, Big yeah. Gunner 81, Southern style beards, Dylan, no problem. <laughs> we'll yeah, I gotta get one of those for sure. Micrometer on the side of it for you there, Dylan. Nice. Oh, that'd, that'd be cool. That would be awesome. <laughs> Actually, put a nice uh, put a nice FN logo on the side of that. That would be cool. FN's got some great customer service. So I had that problem with my FN X forty five. Yeah, and, uh, it's been sitting here like forever just out of service right and uh i finally met one of the guys at shot show and it was i think it was the vice president i told him about my problem and he's like here call this guy get this set up get the gun into the shop and they turned it around in like less than a it was about a week and the gun works great mags drop free and everything so it was a it was a great uh, great experience you guys are doing yeah the customer service all the service department guys they've all been there as long as the plants but i've been here in columbia so probably 30 plus years for all of them um, very rarely does anyone leave FN. You either work there until they don't need your job anymore, or you work there until you retire, which is up to this point never. We, I've got a guy I work with that's been there since the day the plant opened. He's been there 37 years. Awesome. Um, wow. A handful of guys that have been there, you know, 30, 35 years. So uh, it's just a great place to work. Everyone there loves what they do. I was going to say, bet, bet there's a little bit of knowledge about guns among that crew. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe just a little. Yeah. Anything you could possibly want to know about an FN gun, somebody there knows. It was funny. I was standing there talking to the vice president for a little while, and then another guy came up behind me from the LE division. And he's like, don't I know you? And I'm like, I, I'm like, then all of a sudden it dawned on me. 
this was one of the FN guys that came out because I bought one of the, I bought two of the brand new FN 303 less lethal launchers for our, uh, for our exec protect team. And uh, when I was running my, uh, my training facility and he's like, Oh, how's your facility going? I'm like, Oh yeah. And- <laughs> Yeah. Um, no matter who you talk to, there's like <laughs> guys that are at the booth at SHOT Show and stuff like that that aren't working back in the plant. They can still run you through the entire manufacturing process. Um, just everyone knows so much about it. Everyone's so well invested in the company. Yeah. Um, they don't keep any secrets from us, like product launch dates. We have an all-hands meeting once a quarter. They tell us everything. You know, No matter if you're the guy who's cleaning the bathrooms or you know, you're – Greg Butler, the COO, no one cares. It, everyone knows everything. That's a good. That's a good philosophy because everybody's got to talk to their friends and family about it. And oh yeah, everyone's interested. You know, if you're interested in guns and you find out, oh, this gentleman works for FN, <clears throat> what he wants to know, and he can just sit there and be like, oh, hey, we got some new product launching next quarter. Yeah, it's the best way to to get new product out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because honestly, most of the people I work with, if not everybody I work with is buying all these new guns. Like just recently the, the FN 509 pistol came out. Yeah. Everyone on the plant floor was ready to get one <laughs> before it even came out. They gave us the announced dates, you know, three or four months in advance. Everyone was already saving up money and ready to go. Uh, we were convinced already because we had been making them for, you know, six months ahead of time anyway. So yeah. we knew what was up. We'd seen the guys run them on the test range. We'd had the chance to shoot them already. So and we were just ready for them to release. That's awesome. That's why that's why we can't ever get any of the new product. Oh yeah, we're hogging it all back in the plant. <laughs> Everybody on the plant floor yeah. has got one or two of them. Yep, exactly. So you said the FNX forty five, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I actually did get to shoot one out. We did a rental back when I was visiting my sister in Missouri at one point. Um at a local range there and uh took it out for a spin and I actually liked it. Pretty nice. Oh, it's a it's a beast of it's a beast of a gun, you know. I mean, they jammed a what? Um, I can't remember how many rounds are in there. Fifteen rounds, I believe. Fifteen rounds of forty-five, yeah. Yep. And it's um, I just have one gripe, and it's the front it's the front uh, the front strap is done horizontal with these lines, and it's polished in between. And no matter yep. how hard you like grip a hold of this thing and just try squeezing the life out of it. The thing will always squirm in your hand, just that little bit. And, just... and you know, they had problems that same way with the uh, the FNS9 uh, and FNS40 pistols, yeah. um, which is one thing they addressed with the 509. If you've seen the aggressive checker on the front of the 509, it's yeah. completely different. Um, and now because... That, now that my gun's fixed, I'm going to hit it really hard and stipple the hell out of it. And, oh, yeah. Because I love it. I mean, it's a, it's a great shooting gun. But one thing they did right was they made the 509 frame and grip compatible with the FNS series of pistols. So you could in theory take an FNS non long slide that you're using in, you know, USPSA production division or something like that and just throw it on top of your 509 bottom end, use 509 mags, have a better trigger and still have a 509 sight radius. So it's a pretty good setup. Pretty cool. Hmm. Pretty cool. So uh, Dylan, what kind of stuff do you actually machine there? You know, like what do you actually work on from day to day? Most of what I'm doing is M240 or M249 parts, um, whether it be, you know, anything from piston rods to bolts, you know, you name it, anything inside the gun I'm doing. And what kind of machines do they actually use there? Again, it's, you name it, they've got machines like uh, horizontal machines from, you know, early 1900s all the way up to state of the art, 20 horsepower, 1,000 inch per minute. Uh, seven axis CNC machines. We run a little bit of everything. Okay. You guys yeah, it's absolutely that? state of the art. The the best of the best is what they got. Are you guys running the DMGs? I run all of the manual stuff. I don't touch any of the the CNC unless it's like our our OD grinders and stuff like that. So okay. uh, I wouldn't really know. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting too. Like a, a while back, I got the chance to visit Criterion Barrels up in Wisconsin, and um, they're using uh, you know older um, gun barrel drills that were used to make like the original uh, was it the Springfield Armory, like the M1As, or whatever. I forget. Um, but it's kind of neat to see this old equipment and just being all freshened up and still making the same you know components today that it made you know a million years ago. 
Oh, yeah. um, and it's it's ironic because they said, yeah, like this is the same equipment that's making the reproduction barrels for those rifles now. You know, it used to make them new back in the day. So it's kind of neat. But of course, it's you know, if it's good, accurate equipment, it's gonna it's gonna do what it's always done. You know. Some of that old stuff is built just so freaking solid, you know, it'll never wear out. It's got some really great tolerances. And you know what, for doing barrels, I've talked to a couple other guys uh, over the years. The new machines just, they're not really meant to run barrels. I mean, they're cut all the way through and they've got their their three lugs on the back side of the chuck and stuff. It's just, they don't do a great job. And, you know, a lot of the guys are always looking at those uh on the auction sites and stuff about oh, oh and they know exactly what machine and what date that machine was made and at what plant and they're like oh no don't get that one you got to get this one they're, they're they're nuts about it but that's those are the guys that you want making your barrel oh yeah For hey sure. uh i hope pete saw this we got a question over on youtube or a comment um for uh dylan actually okay and this from gun champ says love big Grenade one dylan have you made an awesome or you I'm sorry, Dylan, you have made awesome progress in three gun and USBSA matches. What kind of practice and training routine do you have? I re just recently got involved in competitive shooting myself. Um that's a pretty in-depth topic. Uh training <laughs> we got some most time, most most of my training is dry fire. Um <clears throat> being able to afford, you know, thousands of dollars in ammo a week to practice like most of the pros do is is really hard even for someone who's who's sponsored like myself um, so normally my regular day will consist of waking up I get up at 3 a.m. every morning I dry fire until 4:30, go to work uh, get home about 4:30 in the afternoon and dry fire until I've got something else to do or my hands won't hold the gun anymore so um, that's that's what I do Monday through Thursday Friday um, I actually practice at the range all day with one of my teammates uh, Robert um, we're pretty pretty regular about that. And then Saturday and Sunday, we'll either shoot one match both days or just one match for the whole weekend, depending on what it is. So uh, I stay pretty busy with practice. Um, but if, if you want to get better, that's what you got to do. You got to be committed to it. You got to be willing to put in the hours. Um, there's no other way to go about it. No substitution for hard work. Yeah, I think hey, Dylan. Hearing... Sorry, go ahead, Pete. Sorry, Rick. Hey, Dylan, what, what attracted you to the sport? You know, this is going to sound a little silly. So uh, I'm actually, I have an automotive background. Uh, I was in college working as a diesel mechanic and someone shared a video on Facebook of Jared Mitchell like shooting. Um, <laughs> and I saw that video, immediately went to a store, bought a pistol, started going to the range every day. Um, my routine was 50 rounds a day, seven days a week. I went and did a live fire. That's all I did. Uh, eventually I was there so much the range ended up hiring me as a range safety officer. Um, shortly after that, I got certified as a as an instructor. Worked as an instructor there for a long time. Um, one of the guys that worked there uh, did a lot of three gun. He shot regionals, national stuff like that. He let me borrow all his equipment. Shot one match. After that, I was hooked. Um, that's all I could think about all the time was competitive shooting. So uh, this is this is where I ended up. It just stuck with me. That's awesome. It is awesome. It is great. That's one of the good things about competitive shooting as well as anyone who's a competitor, they, they literally give you the shirt off their back if you ask for it. Um, whether it be borrowing guns, ammo, anything like that, there's there's always someone out there who will help you get into it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it is a really awesome uh, sport with a lot of great people involved in it, for sure. I mean, like you said, the, the camaraderie, the, the sharing of everything, um, you know, you, got, you end up getting making friends, you end up like sharing uh, – you know, hotel rooms and, and the cost of uh, transportation and things like that to help save money when it comes to because obviously if we we're talking the cost of ammo and everything else uh, oh, yeah. can really add up in this hobby. It's you know especially when it's three gun. You know if you're doing one gun, yeah, it's expensive. Get to the two, three, yeah, that adds up even more. So yeah, three gun gets really expensive. Um, I'm actually going to the South Regional in Alabama, and I'm lucky enough to have a friend who's uh, splitting hotel and travel costs and all that stuff with me. So. You know, without people like that, there's no way I could afford to shoot six matches a month. There's just no way I could do it. Yeah, very true. I mean, I know it's, it is expensive. So um, if anyone else has any other questions out there on YouTube, Lane, let us know. You know, we're always kind of glancing back and forth of that, too, throughout the show um, and whatnot. So uh, 
of course, there's a few comments and questions or comments from people that are on the show. <laughs> I just noticed that. I see Corey uh, responding back to uh, to oh, Shannon saying this is a great show. So thank you. So I'm sorry, Corey. Um, what were you saying? I I, I have a question, um, and Rick. I I asked you this before we even went live on Facebook, um, and you said you didn't know much about it. Does anybody have any any thoughts on the? Uh, attack that happened yesterday over in Manchester. Um, I know, I know for one, I, I, you know, I, my, my deepest condolences, thoughts and prayers are with the, the teenage uh, families that's uh, had injuries and loss of life. Um, it's definitely a, a big, a big blow. I mean, they're attacking children now and uh, right. you, you know, I, I don't know too much about it myself either. I've watched a, watched a few things. Um, I, uh, I actually watched Joe Walsh on uh, on Facebook, and I actually got on last night and uh, and had a question for him. So, um, you know, I, I think this is just ridiculous. I mean, when, when are people going to learn? You know, these the you know they're pretty much. A, you know, I, I used this a little bit last night. I hate to say this, but, you know, they're pretty much the teachers and they're showing us examples. And, you know, people are just, you know, not learning from it. You know, what are we going to do? Um, it's time to act. That's just my thoughts. Right. Wasn't that the, wasn't that the same, uh, same girl that was uh, doing the, uh, the woman march? Yes. Yes. I don't yeah, and uh, that kind of that kind of stuff uh, day to day. I'm pretty busy, but somebody, you know, my guy in the shop said, "Oh, it was the same girl that organized that big, huge march." Well, yeah, yeah, she she's part of she's part of it. Uh, you know, I saw some I saw some uh, some things on where she commented she wished her fans would die, and she hates America. Um, you know, and I think I think I read that that was after a show. The same fans that are buying tickets and albums. Keeping, yeah, uh, keeping her wealthy. Well, yeah, which is which is what I thought initially after after I read the the comments. Apparently, this was right after a radio show. As soon as the doors closed and everything was off air, um, you know, I that I mean, that's a special type of neurosis, there, boy. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's. I mean, to say to say to say that before something like this happens and then it actually happens, I I just. I'm glad. I, I hope she feels some sort of, of remorse or something because uh, she definitely needs to after those comments that she made and that happened at her show. That's uh, I, it's for, pretty, just what, what comments were they? Because I didn't. Sorry, Will. Um, the co oh, sorry, uh, sorry, Rick. Um, the comment, the comments I've seen today were that she wished every every f and one of her fans died, and and she hates America. She's uh, well, I, I'm not going to say her name, but we all we all can find out. But uh, you know, she she's big in the Hillary Clinton wearing the wearing the vagina hats, doing women's marches, and all all about love and opening borders and everything like that. And now it's attacking her teenage her teenage fans that. You know she hates so much, and you know I, I hope I hope that uh, that her heart aches for all them all them people that were affected because it definitely needs to be. She can always you know just turn in her passport, renounce her citizenship, and exactly. I mean, there's I mean, nothing that, holding her here. I mean, we're not chaining her to the freaking tarmac. Oh no, I you know I think uh, stuff like that, and you know all the innocent families and you know um, people they don't they don't deserve that. They really don't deserve yeah. that. Deserve I think that. Uh, you know. I I think that's what a, a lot of a lot of celebrities you know preached about and really really said they were going to do. You know, once once Trump got elected and you know if Hillary didn't win and you know, I haven't heard or seen of anybody leaving yet, and yet here here they are griping. Right. You know, the first place oh, they go back to when everything's up in flames. Oh, I want to go back to America where it's safe. Yeah, I mean, we're wall and my big house. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're trying, we're trying, you know, he, he's trying to, to do a travel ban and it's, it's not, I mean, it's not that, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, everybody needs to do their process legally, you know, and, uh, and it's, you know, it's just something that needs to be done. I mean, they're, they're just flooding in and you don't know who it is these days. 
unfortunately is you know back uh back from ellis island everyone wanted to come here to get away from uh you know oppression and Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. they wanted a fresh start you know and they were now it's it's totally different they want to bring the oppression with them oh yeah the, these these guys are uh are the ones that uh, are seek and destroy and seek and destroy only they don't they aren't in anything else they just want to kill it's not about yeah. being muslim it's not about allah it's not about christianity judaism nothing it's just about killing people that's just all that that's what they want to do you know what's interesting we had three business partners from Denmark fly in a couple weeks ago. And one of the main reasons they flew in was to shoot. So we, you know, I got everything from a 1873 Colt reproduction, 45 long Colt out for them to an AR 15 and, and pistols. We had a great time. Three days they were in. And uh, like I say, the primary reason was to come visit us and shoot. It's pretty cool. Can't do that cool. just anywhere. So, did they buy a Range 35 hat though? We don't have, well, the stay tuned mid June, we'll have the Range at 355 hats out. Okay. Or, or shirts. Yes. You know, maybe oh, yeah. yes, like run style. Shirts. Yeah. yeah. Don't know. I, I spent a few hours with them, but, but don't know what they did on the way out. They should have. Gotcha. The heck. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, uh, I just got my first rendition of my grunt style shirt for Vulture. Looking pretty good. Nice. Looking pretty good. Some awesome. tweaks, you know, it's the it's the process. You ain't gotta go back and forth and get it, but they're they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun to deal with. So we got a couple things I'm gonna be uh checking out which coming up pretty soon. Um next week we should have the owner and founder of Right On Optics on the show. Um, one of the optics we'll be using for uh, 50 States AR-15 project. And I picked up some stuff from uh, Tough Gear. Got a basically inline six or six inline mag pouch. So you throw some pistol mags in there. Um, we did do a video on this actually at SHOT Show on the uh, ice stove. Pack. It's like their backpack. Kind of cool. Nice little fold-up deal. You know, I, was, I picked one of these up because I want to put it like in my truck, so I have a backpack, so I throw stuff in if I need to. It's neat because it'll fit like right in like if you got a pocket in your back seat or something like that. Um, what that, else? We that's get? a that's a great concept. I I did some bullet train travel in in Japan, and you know you can't haul your whole whole luggage on one of the bullet trains, so those little stowaway packs are awesome for trips like that. Yeah, if you're going to be picking something up to bring back or whatever with you, um, it's a good way to kind of carry it. Like, for example, if you're flying someplace and they have those baggage fees on the plane, you need an extra bag to take with you, you could throw, like, that bag inside of something. If you're bringing stuff back with you, you have a way to use it as a carry-on or whatever. Um, also, if I can't see because of glitter, tough three-gun ammo bags. These are pretty cool. So, like, if you, especially if you reload, you know, when you take – or if you have a uh, factory ammo and you want to take it out of all big bulky boxes, it's kind of got like a small, medium, large almost, I think. They're actually, I guess the two are actually about the same size, rather. So you have like two that are like me for your pistol and rifle ammo. Throw it in there. You know, it has drawstrings on it and so forth. Um, fits in your range bag or whatever that way. Large one for like shotgun shells. You know, so... I thought it was kind of a cool concept because, you know, you end up carrying all, like, all the cardboard with you or if you just want to, like they said, throw your uh, reloads and whatnot into something that, that's loose you can carry with you around and, and kind of be able to just kind of use it like a you know, bag to reach in and load up from. Um, so we'll be checking those out later on a little bit more and playing around with them. Um, what else we got? I know I got a few videos I'll be working on here pretty soon. I've got some holsters and stuff that I look at too. Um, this is from Crossfire. This is their uh, low-profile 3D pancake holster. I guess it's called the Rocket. It is a, um, well, I guess you can call it a soft holster. This is not like a Kydex. It's like a, like almost like a nylon type material of some type, which we'll kind of be looking at a little bit more. I'll do a video on that as a review and so forth. So I got I got a stack of some stuff. I got to you know do some videos on and whatnot too coming up. 
um, which we'll have some fun doing. And uh, what else? Um, let's see. One last take a quick look at. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. So. Oh, okay. So Gun Champs says Pete live in South Carolina, but I'll make it up to Chicago one of these days. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, I, I live in North Carolina, and I hope to make it back up to Chicago at some point. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to go somewhere and shoot where it's not 100 degrees outside like it is here in South Carolina. That would be great. Yeah, that's what I'm discovering, too. The, the heat and the humidity kind of suck. But on the flip yeah. side, you can go out when it's you know wintertime and go shoot and stuff, and it's not dealing with the heavy snow and everything. Well, um, October, October will have the tents out, you know, and we're indoors, so – you're pretty much guaranteed a pretty good environment. In right. uh, Dylan, we do a two-gun match, so we do pistol and we do two stages of pistol, two stages of long gun. Okay. And you know, as we said earlier in the show, the the prize table was ridiculous this time. Oh yeah, I watched the last show where you guys went over the prize table and everything, and that's that's pretty amazing, especially considering um, like even three-gun regionals don't have that sort of that sort of sponsor backing and those are, you know, 300 people shooting those matches. So that, that's amazing. You guys are able to get that together. Yeah. yeah Stay absolutely. tuned. We'll, we'll, uh, and of course we'll talk a lot about it over the next several months on big gunner 81 and, uh, our Instagram and Facebook page and all that. We'll talk quite a bit about it. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, and Dylan, thanks for watching the show too before, and I didn't know you actually had been watching it. Yeah, I actually did watch the show. I didn't just just hop on here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, that's that's pretty cool. It is, it is kind of funny to hear how many people actually do watch this, but for being, uh, being such a small channel and everything, um, it's kind of cool. You know, we, of course, we get the people who are out there live watching that can comment and so forth. Some do, some don't comment, um, and then of course, you know, people during the week, you know, because this is kind of late at night in some places, and. Uh, They'll go back and watch it, the, uh, I guess you'd say a replay, recorded version of it, I guess, uh, and leave comments on there and so forth, which is really neat. So I appreciate all you guys out there watching and, and ladies, I guess, too, not just guys, um, you know, and so forth. Um, but uh, if you guys have anything else you want to add tonight, because we're about to wrap things up, I'll uh, start with Corey, since you're on the end of my screen here. If you got anything you want to throw out. Um, guys, I, I hope I my – my stuff is I never want to offend anybody. This is just who I am. This is this is just an opinion, my opinion. Um, everybody's entitled to their own opinions. I don't want to preach. I don't want to put myself out onto anybody else. It's not what I'm about. Um, and, Rick, thank you for having me again. I love doing this, brother. This is awesome. Yeah, I appreciate having you. It's fun. Um, Pete, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Is Team Glock coming back to the two-gun uh, two run? We believe so. Uh, we had our grunt style meeting the other day, our little uh, AAR, and okay. that is the weekend, the first weekend of, in October is, you know, there's a bunch of matches in September, so we put it to the first weekend in October. We'll okay. have our brother Johnny Van back lighting up the grill, and uh, Four Roses will be back sponsoring again, and hopefully – our goal and you know in our partners grown style is to make it even better and and to have a prize table that puts this one to shame which i don't think we can nothing's going to put this to shame but this one was awesome. pretty good dude that thing was chuck full yeah yeah, yeah. i especially loved uh did you hear what they called that uh cocktail the guys from four roses came up with that that's nasd up whiskey sour no and they called it the spent brass Oh, that's cool. Ooh. I, I did. Classy. I did have a taste or two myself. Yeah, <laughs> I had two of those standing at the knife counter. I'm like, well, as long as I'm not shooting, uh, I might as well partake in the in the uh, in the festivities. Nice. Yeah. So, so Corey, Corey, thanks for having us again, too. I, absolutely. So, Corey, you got anything else you want to ask or throw? Up? Um, no, man, I, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you all again awesome. for having me. I love this. Appreciate it. That was good seeing and, you. Uh, you will. And Dylan, you got anything you want to throw out and mention? Any sponsors you no. want to talk about real quick? Um, I'm going to give a shout-out to my friend Ashton uh, from Watery Tactical. They do a lot of cool training stuff, um, and he's been pestering me for a shout-out. So there you go. There it is. <laughs> um, awesome. And thanks for having me, guys. It, it was a lot of fun. 
Yeah, always pleasure to have you. Back. Yeah, Hopefully we'll get to do some shooting always. sometime since you're now that far. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Be very cool. So, uh, yeah, thank you again. And then, uh, Will, always a pleasure to have you. Thanks, guys. So, I love your background as always to you. Yeah. We got to yeah. do something with the lighting a little bit, but uh, other than that, it, it, yeah, yeah, we got the do. best setup right there. As soon as I get back from Blade Show, I'll have a little bit more time. I got that awesome. AK, back, AK back there, you know, taking up shop. Right there. Yeah, yeah, I like I like my AK. <laughs> I still got to add one of those to my collection. It's on my list. I throw it off the roof of the roof of the Sears Tower, and it'll probably still go bang. You know, that's a quality <laughs> rifle. There goes down. Let's go up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Pete, again, uh, or Will, thank you again, Will, and um, Pete. You got anything else you want to throw out? Yes, I took the liberty of offering Gunchamp a ride in your and Laura's car on the way here in October. <laughs> I saw that. So she's sure going to come. That one. She's going to come shred this, and we uh, look forward to having her. And uh, thanks again for cheers to Laura as well, and thanks for having me as always. Like awesome, yeah, I appreciate it as always as well too. And um, also going to uh, oh yeah, Gunchamp says yes. I'll book my vacation now. Not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So uh, Gun Channels again, too. Um, go check them out, gunchannels.com. They got this uh, Kickstarter campaign going for some uh, Old West Guns um, playing card deck that's going on. You can check out Kickstarter. Um, the URL is kind of long, but uh, I'm sure they have it posted over at gunchannels.com for you to check out. It's kind of a neat pack that trying to put together with different um, firearms from the Old West and uh, just something unique and uh, definitely worth supporting Gun Channels. It's a nice place, kind of like a Facebook for um, gun owners and people who like to do gun videos and so forth and to chat about guns. They have a live chat 24-7 that's text-based and usually there's also a uh, Google Hangout that's running as well where um, you know people can go on and kind of chat just like this chat or this show, you know, kind of goes. But it's, uh, you know, something that runs usually eight hours at a time, I think. People can just jump in and jump out and so forth whenever they want to just talk about guns and whatever. So... Anyway, uh, that's pretty much the, the, the synopsis of our Gun Channels, and uh, you can check it out, gunchannels.com. So, um, until next time, everybody, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, have fun shooting.